Neptune missiles expand horizons. Analysts commented the results of first Neptune strike on Russia. The strike by Ukrainian Neptune missiles on an oil terminal near the Kavkaz port in Russia is a historical event, Defense Express noted. Here we have a literally historical event because this is the first time domestic missile weapons were used to attack targets on the territory of the Russian Federation, the analysts pointed out. Secondly, the historicity lies in the fact that the very fact of carrying out an attack on the terminal in the area of the Russian port of Kavkaz indicates a significant modernization of Neptune, experts added. It is noted that this modernization could consist of increasing the launch range, increasing the mass of the warhead and improving the guidance system. Analysts have suggested that Neptune's actual launch range could now be more than 300 kilometers. In addition, it should be noted that the Lion's share of the probable flight route of the Neptunes to the Kavkaz port area was supposed to lie over land. In order for the missiles to fly in such conditions, it was necessary to significantly improve the guidance system. Defense Express added, Let us remind you that the general staff of the armed forces of Ukraine reported that on the night of May the 31st, Ukrainian fighters struck an oil terminal near the port of Kavkaz in the Krasnodar region of Russia. It was reported that the strike was carried out by several Ukrainian-made missiles from the Neptune coast Coastal missile system. The capabilities of the domestic navy are gradually growing. The head of the Center for Strategic Communications of the Defense Forces of Southern Ukraine, Dmitry Pletenchuk, spoke about this during the telethon. The Navy Rocketeers have slightly expanded the horizons, relatively speaking, of their activities. The Ukrainian Neptune is also gradually growing and, accordingly, its use may change. We have already seen the work of the system in Crimea. And yes, you can see it there is effectiveness. The Ukrainian missile program is showing serious results. We are proud that we have actually become pioneers in this area and that it is the Navy that has such a successful practice in using these missile systems, Pletenchuk said. Putin will win if the West and Ukraine do not implement a new strategy, Bloomberg. Ukraine's allies need to radically rethink their approach to defense assistance to Kiev, columnist Mark Champion writes in a Bloomberg column. Putin greatly underestimated Ukraine and the West two years ago and he has adapted and will win if both the West and Ukraine fail to develop and implement a new strategy, the author noted. He believes the US presidential election in November could lead to sweeping changes in Washington, making it even more important to have clear policies and a viable strategy. The columnist called it a mess, not a strategy, that it took the Biden administration more than two years to openly declare its desire for Ukraine to win the war. It took just as long to seriously talk about what to do with some $300 billion in frozen Russian assets or to approve the sending of the long-range ATA CMS missiles and F-16s that Ukraine so obviously needs. Even now, debate continues over whether Ukraine will be able to use these weapons to strike targets in Russia is a mess, not a strategy that was understandable at the beginning of the war but is now unforgivable. According to the author, at the upcoming meeting to mark NATO's 75th anniversary in July, leaders should use this opportunity to decisively rethink Ukraine's defense. They must set victory as a goal, define the parameters of what it means and explain how they plan to achieve it. Then and only then can the promise of as long as it takes be replaced with whatever it takes. The author also believes that a clearer explanation of the consequences of Russia's victory in Ukraine would be a good starting point. It is necessary to convince that Putin's invasion has radically changed the rules of US-China competition. In addition, the columnist advises to stop justifying support for Ukraine by defending liberal democracy. By helping Ukraine, NATO is defending the fundamental defense of the UN against countries that change their borders by force. This principle is also valued by the vast majority of leaders in Africa, the Middle East. First of all, this is a war to maintain the integrity of borders and prevent further wars. Ukraine's allies 
should clearly announce this at the July NATO summit and perhaps even invite a few autocrats to help drive home the message.